starting here, we have Osmocote, but this is the Suncoat variety. This is actually only commercially available at uh, local places like BWI or your local bonsai nursery will sell to you in smaller quantities other than 50 pound bags. Um, this is a slightly different NPK value, which is nitrogen, something and something, who cares? The, um, these three numbers are the important thing. It doesn't have any micronutrients in it. Now the micronutrients are of course really beneficial depending on the tree. We'll go over all that as we get going though. But basically, sun coat, AKA osmocote. Um, this would be considered osmocote, but not osmocote plus, since plus contains the micros. And uh, that you can buy at uh, Home Depot, by the way. Uh, Bogain, another Home Depot favorite, also available at Lowe's and Walmart. Probably JC Penney's too, for all I know. But Bogain is for Bougainvilleas, specifically for Bougainvilleas, and really meant only for them. It's pretty easy with a bogue, you chop it, and then you sprinkle this on. And when it's done flowering, you chop it again, sprinkle more of this on. When it's done flowering, you chop it again, sprinkle more of this on, and in between all that, you bonsai along the way. Um, but if you just want pretty flowers, that's the answer for landscape and for bonsai. The other pebbles we have here, and all the pebbles are our chemical fertilizers. Uh, we have Harold's 24510. This is the original fertilizer that Jim Smith used when he was developing the first porch of the Caria Afros for bonsai back in the 50s or 60s or so, I think. So Harold's is a really high in N, but not much in P and not much in K, uh, primarily because the porch of the Caria Afros are succulents and there's really no reason for all of the extra stuff. Uh, more fertilizers here. Uh, we also have, um, these are tea bags, which are available on Amazon. Uh, we'll probably throw some links up somewhere for these. They're kind of hard to find unless you know the right keywords to search for. But they're only like a couple dollars for a thousand of them delivered from China. And um, they're reusable tea bags, but they're um, very easy to fill and you can tack them down if you need to. These ones contain sumo cakes. And these ones contain bio gold for 10 times the price. What is it? I don't know. It really looks a lot like kibbles and bits though. But for the expensive trees like the specimen quality black pines and whatnot, um, your cypress forests, things like that, that are real high quality. You want to use the good stuff in combination with the, I hate to say cheaper stuff. Um, I bet you if you ran an A-B test, it'd probably do the same thing. How about less costly? This is definitely less expensive. I think these are 10 or $12 or something like that for 55 cakes, and this is like a full 55 cake bag. Um, something along those lines. You have, I'm, don't take my word for it, and pricing changes all the time, I'm sure, too. Uh, the bio gold, that shit's like $100 for, what is it, a four or five kilogram bag? Ouch. What's in the bottles? Oh, I'm sorry, I should get to that too, huh? This is Micromax. And it's basically a um, micronutrients. So if you're using a tree that uses sun coat or Harrell's, that needs a little more micros, you can use this. Now, Harold's already has micronutrients in it, but it doesn't contain a full assortment of micronutrients. Um, Micromax contains a lot of all of them, especially a lot of iron. So on a lot of trees, especially things like azaleas, your cypresses, um, we're gonna wanna be putting the Micromax. Well, as we get through each species in the garden, we'll go over which of these to use too. How do you apply it? Just sprinkle it on a steak? Sprinkle it on like uh, pepper on a steak. What's Ron Same thing G? with Ron Star G. Ron Star G is only commercially available. It's a pre-emergent herbicide. And um, it's available in 50 pound bags. I'm sure somebody sells it smaller quantities somewhere. A lot of trees in the garden have a voluminous amount of weeds in them. The ones that do are from other people I haven't repotted yet. And those are the people that don't use Ron Star. The trees in the garden, they have no weeds such as the trees that come from Weigert or Schleis. Um, they have all been treated with a pre-emergent herbicide and thus they contain no weeds in them. Or shall I say, the weeds cannot grow in them. I have another friend who plucks weeds every Saturday. I said, why? Why? Such a waste of time. And then uh, this is a little bit of Merit, which is a, um, Merit is a brand name of, this is Merit 0.5G. It's immunocloprid, which is a systemic. Um, it kills bad bugs and stuff like that. 
I have a few cypresses that need a little bit of that out, so it's on the cart right now in advance of the normal bug and pest control and fungus treatment sprays. So normally it wouldn't be on the monthly fertilizer cart, but for now it is. And this is something we do every month, uh, especially with the pebbles. Once a month you come out and you put them on. How many you put on is up to the growing season. However, one thing that's important with the pebbles is that when it's hotter, they release more nutrients. And uh, I don't think a lot of people realize that. So as it builds up for the summertime, when it gets hotter, you get a big flush of all the nutrients that come from you having fertilized it steadily each month and the prior month and the prior month before that. And when all those pebbles are there in your soil and it builds up and here comes summer, boom, hot. Whoosh, and then all those are gone and fall hits. You're still routinely hitting with your monthly cycle on most species, let's say tropicals and stuff. Um, but once that's over, um, you're, you're just ready to go into spring again for the next year. And of course, when you're repotting, you take everything out anyways. They can be a little annoying when they leave little plastic pebbles. Um, however, it's nothing a quick root rake and a fresh top layer of soil doesn't uh, fix real fast. So all we need to know before we hit the trees? Pretty much, yep. The rest will just be walk and go. For the campeche we're using Harold's. Since I don't know what to use, I'm using what the previous guy used. This tree came from Eric, and he was using Harold's. As such, I shall continue. If there's something better for it later, we'll learn about it then. Buttonwood, another real simple one. Harold's. Now the road bleed we can skip. What? Actually, no, we shouldn't skip it. We should give it some little bit still. We originally put some sun coat on it just because it was a freshly repotted tree. Now that the tree is obviously happy from its repot since there's a full defoliation and everything. This road bleed even flowered it a little bit. We posted a picture of it on the Facebook page. Robles are kind of hard to get to flower. But um, nonetheless, with, uh, with the Robley, now that it seems happy, we'll nuke it a little bit more. Look how fast it's already healing those wounds. It like busted through the cut paste to heal it. <laughs> no, you don't cut this now. You wait till the wound heals. All right, next up we got the Epcot Elm. Now this one still has a little moss from Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival, where it was to the left of the Tory Gate for three months. A pretty cool opportunity to bring a tree there. This tree was in Del Cachoy's backyard for decades. One of the centerpieces there. Free moss to the landscape. Now, of course, here in Florida, we don't really need moss on our trees when we're actually growing them outside. Um, that's really just for show. Now, this is a, a great example of a, a unique fertilizer situation. It's a Chinese elm, so 
it pretty much likes everything. So with an Elm, we don't really need Harrells because this much nitrogen is just gonna push out the shoots. This is, for the most part, a finished tree. We're not building pads on it. We're not trying to increase ramification either. All we're trying to do is keep it happy. So for a tree like this, well, instead of using the Harrells, we'll just use a little bit of the, uh, the sun coat instead. the way that looks or no? Hell no. I can care less. Some people critique the way pebbles look on the tree. Some people critique liquid because you can't see it. But at least with liquid you know you fed it. Whatever. I mean, obviously they all work. Otherwise everybody wouldn't be doing it. This is a, another Campeche. Just like the very first tree we started on. This was uh, in Jason Schley's nursery's yard for ever. And then when he moves, he brought it with him and put it back on the ground. And then um, a couple months ago, or not a couple months now, but a longer time ago now, uh, plucked it up and got it ready in the container. So it's just in a plastic training pot waiting to be um, decided of what to do with. It needs absolute everything that is completely stock. For this tree, since we're not really trying to develop branches so much, um, we're just trying to let it gain strength and be healthy and happy. We're just going to give it a little bit of sun coat. A little bit of Micromax too. Micromax, by the way, is one thing you put on about every six months, whereas fertilizer is about every month depending on the species. Pretty much here in Florida, everything's every month. On that past elm we were just looking at, the Epcot elm, shall we say, um, that tree is finished. If it wasn't finished, I would probably use um, uh, Harrells on it instead, just to push pad growth and denser ramification faster. Um, it's clip and grow, so all you really need to do is push some lignified shoots, clip it, let it grow again, push some lignified shoots, clip it, let it grow again. And if I'm pushing more nitrogen to the tree, I can do that. And the Chinese elm is very forgiving. Next up is a real European olive tree. So I know a lot of people say, oh, olive isn't really an olive. Well, this is the real olive. Um, this is the European olive, uh, uh, what is it called? The European olivens or something like that, but nonetheless. Um, goofy little name, but we don't really know it because nobody here has them. So it's kind of a species we just don't really keep. Uh, Eric collected these out in California from a bonsai friend's place and brought them back. Uh, Eric has Harold's going to it. We will continue to sing. Remember, Harold's has micronutrients in it. So unless a tree has a specific need for a micronutrient that we don't already use, we're not going to waste the Micromax on it. Although, a 50 pound bag of Micromax for $80 will be enough to last you and your kids and their kids probably a lifetime of bonsai. Silk floss is pretty easy, it's a tropical. Generally the fun thing about tropicals is the rule of thumb is they just need Harrells. If Harrells isn't available, sun coat works, but Harrells is a little better since tropicals grow all the time and we just need branches. Roots are easy on tropicals. If anything, it'd be nice to have something that sloped. Well that probably swells the trunks, so that'd be stupid, huh? I'm going to ignore the ficus since the ficus was just worked on and uh, fertilized just a number of days ago. Now this is a bougainvillea and before when we were talking about the bougainvilleas we talked about the bogain and how 
You simply sprinkle it on, let it go, chop. Sprinkle it on, let it go, chop. But since this is variegated, something about it, I don't know what it is, the tree seems to bract longer. If you know what that means, uh, you might giggle. I don't know. The, uh, the bougainvillea flowers are called bract. Embarrassing. Yeah, it's just this little crappy thing in here, it flowers white. The pink fluorescence is a bract, B R A C T. And uh, the beautiful thing about a bract is it's just a colorful leaf. Really nothing more, nothing less. So people wonder, well, I don't want to push my bougainvillea. You can't. That little flower doesn't cause much stress on the tree. So pushing a bougainvillea and getting some love and color out of it is a good thing. Let it push it. Get the branches, get the ramification. Now, of course, this is a stock turtle tree. Um, it's really just here for color. And in fact, most of our bogies are still really stock and just here for color. Uh, but the lesson to be learned on the variegated species is that since they do tend to have an elongated period of flowering or bracting, that it's, um, I usually end up having to put bogey on them twice just because they don't seem to stop flowering. It's either doing nothing or always flowering. Very easy one. This is an adenium. A lot of people just say, oh, desert rose. Well, yes, adenium. What's neat about it is that this is a Tysoko RCN. However the heck you pronounce that anyways. And uh, all that is fancy for it means it's not the one that you can buy locally in Florida nurseries. It's one that you import from Thailand or from the other countries that grow them. The difference of the two, it's hard to distinguish between the trunks. They look very similar. They both swell. They both callus a little bit. They both have some um, bud knuckles there. But the flower, <coughs> look at the, uh, whew, look at the flower size. That thing is uh, tiny as hell. It's the size of my thumbnail. Plus, plus. All right, it's a really fat thumbnail, I guess, if it were a thumbnail. But the, the Taiso Corsian flowers are very tiny. This tree was purchased from a monastery in Thailand, and uh, two little 11 year old monk kids had to dig it out of the pots to ship it to the USA. Phyto certificate, only eight bucks. So, a desert rose is a succulent. Succulents are very simple, they like nitrogen. Done. Now, this tree, you and I recently repotted. We did. And because of that, we're going to be nice and we're going to give us some sumo cakes. I know you should spread them out, and you should, by the way, if you only use these. If you only use these, you should take one or two, one or two, one or two. Remember, it's a big pot. Mm -hmm. um, this is not a chilling tree. Um, so you're supposed to space your cakes um, relatively even apart with mitigating the volume of the pot for its... Uh, depth too, you know deeper pot requires more of these on top than a shallower pot the um, Thing is I don't use these exclusively on anything. I really use them just as an organic supplement so uh, We're gonna give those a little bit of sumo And a little bit of heralds around the outside Now this bougainvillea is completely done flowering and just about ready to start pushing its next set. So uh, on comes the bougain. I still have to do some bract cleanup on the right side. This ain't really bothered yet. We'll get there. Forgive the mess. There's always something to do in the garden. So if you ever come over and say, oh my God, Ben, you need to do this to this tree. Well, don't worry, don't worry, we'll get there. Everything's on the block. Ilex coronuda, coronata, or something like that. Um, 
New growth comes out really dark red, brightens a little bit, then greens. Um, but I'll tell you what, if you don't want thieves, make a hedge out of this. Woo! I actually own stain, stainless steel mesh gloves to work on that tree. Otherwise, you'll just tear your hands apart. What's you need for fertilizer? Who the hell knows? It's an ilex, so it's basically a hedge. But this tree is going to be on the repot schedule pretty soon. I think for right now, we certainly have enough roots. We definitely have enough roots. So let's give us some heralds to encourage some top growth. Now we can do some work on it. And uh, just enough to give a little bit of love. Uh, this tree, by the way, has never been fertilized. It's fresh to the garden here. Uh, we've had it that little of time. Uh, it's a tree I've always wanted for Mike Rogers. And uh, what, ah, fucker. God damn, that hurts. Told you, that thing hits you. Yeah. Wonder how many beeps we're gonna need. All right, pop quiz, Sam. What is the tree? What? What is the tree? Does it rose. Correct. But a Thai Soko RCN. Same thing as the other one, twin trunk. The root so cool. That does remind me actually. These are one of the trees we're going to put a little merit on. This is the Umeo Cloprid, which is a systemic. Really stops things like um, well, all the bad shit that eats it. That's what's important. I don't really actually care what it kills as long as it works. The desert roses generally need a systemic on there. That way you don't get any thrips on them and stuff. You don't need a bunch, just enough to keep the trunk. But just remember, if you have a problem with a bug on a desert rose and it's not really pushing anything, it's still in the, the water that the tree uptakes. So you don't need to, to kill it with a systemic. You just need to get a little bit on there. This is a Taiwan hackberry, and it's, uh, it's obviously by the name, it's not the Florida native one. Which Celtis is it? Was it the Occidentalis, the Sincensis, or the Lavi Gadi Wadi Wada, whatever? I have no idea, I can't remember. I have it written down somewhere, but it doesn't really matter. What is important is that it's a deciduous tree, so we're giving it a little bit of sun coat, and let's give it a bunch of um, Sumo cakes and a little bit of bio gold just for the hell of it. Let's also try to make it on the tree. That way it actually helps. Fertilize the weeds, Ben. Now, by the way, those tea bags, a lot of people say that squirrels take them and whatnot. Um, we don't have any squirrel problems here in my backyard in Florida. My other good friend, Benjamin, Really has some squirrel problems in his backyard. They'll eat the trunk off his willow leaf ficus. Um, so you may want to secure them to your tree or pour radiator fluid over them. That way it antagonizes the squirrel. Just kidding. This is a tree from BSF purchased from Mary Madison. What are you giving it? This is getting straight up perils. We're also going to put a little bit of organics on it as well. Mary likes to use a lot of miracle Grow, and that's for good reason. Buttonwoods like it wet. We're also going to give this a little bit of emo clopperd since this is new to the garden. The mirror is to keep the bugs off it. We don't want thrips. Buttonwoods and thrips are bad. You don't know you've got them until you're inspecting for what the hell's wrong with the tree? Oh, thrips. Yep. All right, organics. Now, next up, we have a Suriname cherry. And uh, Suriname cherry, of course, is a fruiting tree. Now, as a fruiting tree, the fruit are edible on it. So we don't want to be using as any systemics as possible. And uh, I give it a nice little organic cake. I 
Let's get this over here now. This is a citrus tree. It's just not doing so good, but we'll see if it pushes back. It's still alive. The day after receiving it, it just didn't seem to really want to live any longer. But it was just popping out, so we'll see where it goes. Should be all right. And we have a little tana, lantana over here. For both of those, even though this is a citrus tree, it's not edible. We're just getting a little bit of sun coat, lantana, the same thing. Cypress. A little of that, a little of this, a little here, and a little there. Let's give it a sumo cake, bio gold. Sumo cake, bio gold, two more on the back. If you're curious if I'll actually go around and rotate their position from time to time, yes, I actually do. It's important too. Okay, next up, ficus. This little tree um, needs a lot of hair. And this ficus was the best in show from BSF this year. Julie Triggs, the artist, she collected it herself in Sarasota decades ago. What's the story behind the project? It's a casserina that a ficus just happened to grow on top of somehow and um, strangled the tree. Now it's not a strangler ficus, it's just a generic ficus microcarpa. It wasn't done on purpose, it's all done by accident to nature. Um, but with the yellowness of the leaves, I'm gonna give a little bit of Micromax to alleviate any nutrient deficiencies it may be experiencing right now. I don't know the fertilization history of it prior. Julie's an excellent artist, I would assume, as uh, well as her knowledge is phenomenal. So she's always been treating the tree correctly. A little Micromax can't hurt it, and it should indeed help the leaves pop out greener. Some ficuses do tend to push out yellow and then change over to green a little later. That's okay, that just might be one of them. <laughs> 